Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Test of Life number 127. What are we sitting at? Uh, the 11th already of December. Man, Christmas Flying is by. upon us. It's coming. <laughs> it's coming quick. Yeah. And uh, with us tonight, we've got Mr. Casey Green joining us from the Washington, D.C. area. How are you today, Casey? Doing pretty well. Uh, I missed all the snow, thankfully. I woke up and everybody's cars were covered and I pulled out of the parking garage and uh, I had to hit the defrosters because uh, when uh, Tesla changed out my headliner, they uh, uh, got fingerprints all over my windshield. They got <laughs> they fingerprints in your windshield? <laughs> oh, oh my gosh! <laughs> yes. It's like horrible. Media. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh... You that's, sure that's that was, not you sure that's not part of the the wiping technology? They just didn't get it done. It's on the inside. <laughs> I hear they've yeah. got lasers that are going to fix that soon. <laughs> lasers. Yeah, they don't retrofit anymore. <laughs> <laughs> also joining us from the extreme west northwest coast, uh, Patrick Connor joins us today. How are you today, sir? I'm good. Hey, everybody. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I am. An electric car driver since, guess when, 2007. That has Ooh. been a while. Yeah. It is so, a while. Uh, before this uh, rush of really cool cars, I had to, to get by with um, less than optimal. <laughs> 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 yep. Hello from Oregon, where uh, an, a, a gas car, uh, someone who uh, is suspected drunk, was doing donuts in a parking lot. Oh, hit yeah. a Tesla supercharger and their car caught on fire. And because there was this Tesla supercharger involved, it made news. <laughs> yeah. It did burn up, there's, what, one or two stalls? Yeah, there's yeah. 150,000 gas car fires a year. But yet, this one makes news. Because yeah. <laughs> it involved the word Tesla at some right. point. Right. Yeah, that's so sad. <laughs> that's the world we live in. Hey, you know, it cuts both ways. It's good to get media attention. And this is the other side of that. Sure. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, um, yeah, we've got a, a ton of news. Uh, nothing new there. Uh, always a ton of news uh, in the Tesla life. Uh, but um, I think what we're going to start off today with uh, is a photograph uh, that um, was put on our Twitter feed. By the way, if you don't know about the Twitter feed, at the Tesla Life, uh, sign up today. Uh, we were talking uh, previously about how the... Um, uh, the Cybertruck's rims uh, and tires, they have this weird-looking outcropping on the outside of the tire. They are 35-inch uh, Goodyear tires that were on the prototype. But what was interesting was that they stick outside of the rim slightly with this cover that appears to be on the outside of the tire. And there was a conversation on the Twitter feed about people talking about uh, rim rash, uh, which, of course, is prevalent with the Model 3s. If you have a Model 3 uh, and an S, uh, X for that matter, uh, they're all the, the rubber's really close to the rim on all the cars. Mm -hmm. So if you get close to a curb, uh, you can rash your rim really easily. Uh, it's not, it's not uh, hard to do that. Even and if you have your wheel covers on. Even if you have wheel covers on. <laughs> because, of course, the rims go right to the edge, uh, yeah. and the wheel cover kind of sits inside of it. Um, so it was uh, it was a question that was put on uh, Twitter about uh, what is the Cybertruck going to do? And yeah. luckily, luckily, uh, there is an inside photo that was shared to us. Uh, really, it was kind of by mistake um, because <laughs> what what happened was that Elon posted a photo about the window. And we we'll it. share that now. <laughs> And this, of course, was the uh, the ball test that they wanted to show us that the window actually did work against a steel ball. But you'll notice that there's a picture of the tire in the front uh, corner there. And if you zoom in on that, you've got the actual t uh, rim without the wheel cover showing. So we've got uh, a picture, and it looks like you've got the bulb of the tire. Uh, looks like it sticks out a little bit further than a typical Tesla probably because it's a 35-inch tire. But uh, you've got that protection uh, from the rim rash because uh, it gives it uh, a little breathing room because the tire will rub the uh, curb before the rim gets to it. So uh, that was great detective work. Uh, someone showed us that information on Twitter and let us know that, uh, yes, there was a picture of the rim that's underneath the uh, cover uh, that's been shown in all the pictures. So that was good. Plus, this yeah. time the wheel cover is actually... A sacrificial uh, member. I'm like, exactly. the ones behind you. Exactly. 
So now you've got this uh, bonus of uh, you've got that little bit of protection uh, that will help uh, you out if you ever get close to the rim with the truck. Now, we don't know if those are going to be the default tires nor the default rims, yeah. but uh, this is uh, and, and another thing I found out, someone priced the tires that were on the truck. Mm. They're 500 bucks US a tire. <laughs> That's not what I'm used to with them. So, uh, you know, those <laughs> big tires are typically expensive. So yeah. uh, if you're in line for the Cybertruck and you love those rims and tires, just keep in mind that you're going to be you're going to be paying for those rims and tires. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody should um, make a rim that's just pre-rashed all the way around. That's the way it comes. <laughs> and then if you ever rash it, you can't tell. It's just, oh, yeah, that's not the way they come. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> there you go. There you go. So on Tire Rack, the Model X 20 tires are uh, about 1400 to 1600 And if you get them from Tesla, depending on which shop you go to, they're anywhere from 1800 to 2200 Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes, indeed. yes indeed well our next story is a little bit about Cybertruck as well some uh, production times have changed and Casey's got that story for us yes so you guys may have noticed that I put down on a uh, tri-motor uh, Cybertruck and uh, I did that for several reasons one because the truck grew on me and two because it was going to be the last one to hit the road so I'd get the advantage of somebody else being the guinea pig and a couple more months to save up uh and figure out how I was going to pay for this thing. Well, Tesla's Here's decided that... <laughs> they, yeah, they take money, but I had to figure out <laughs> how I wanted to allocate I'm, money. I'm so the, uh, the the company has decided that they're going to make dual motor and tri-motor first, and they're going to push back the starter model. So it's going to look just like all of their other launches. So uh, there's a chance I will be a guinea pig again, and uh, <laughs> and I might have two car payments at once for a little while. Oh, of, no! Oh, yeah. <laughs> Car payments are for chumps, my friend. Don't do it. Just pay cash. But the, the rates were so so nice. It was it was. I made more on the stock market. That's cool. Yeah, if you can uh, borrow money at three percent and earn eleven percent, you're you're winning. Uh, as long as it works out that way, you are taking a little bit of a risk. You are, yeah. Yeah, and uh, we are definitely not a stock show. So. Yep. And uh, so I went ahead and got full self drive on that one as well. <laughs> you went for broke, so you broke, got, all right? <laughs> yeah, you'll be broke. Yeah, you went, yeah. went all out on this baby. And speaking of full self drive, I finally got the computer installed on my Model X. Awesome! So, How'd that retrofit go? Uh, it went pretty well. the 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 computer worked great. The service was uh, getting better than it has been lately, but it's not as good as they have shown us that they are capable of. Hmm. So this this uh, is a different system. So th they were talking about how when they uh, first started development for it, that it was actually a step down from their existing system. Uh, and so I wonder if they've caught up yet. Is, did, yes. you, did you notice any difference? They are on par now. Um, they actually okay. they actually updated me to the same software version I had when I, when they put the computer in, and um, it added the ability for my car to see cones, and it, cool. it just feels snappier. Uh, it also feels like it's being held back because it's, it's got the same logic and software to it. So on uh, one of the first days, it uh, it aborted a, a lane change with nothing going on, no traffic around us. Mm. And then that later that night, it reset itself just like the other one would do occasionally. High beams go on, and then you can see that it doesn't see anything. And then, uh, then we got an update, a bug fix update. And then uh, we just recently got 40... Dot two dot one, and uh, I'm in the middle of working with that one. And uh, the rain sensor, the, the, the rain sensor, the the um, deep rain, deep rain, the <laughs> rain neural net. Yeah, it is better than what was there, but uh, there is definitely opportunity to train it with uh, with the single wipe button. Cool. Okay. Yeah, and since it's just rolling out, you're definitely going to see improvements with every software release from now forward. Yes, and I'll actually. How long have to... they been shipping uh, the full self driving computer? So it started on Model S and Model X, what was it, March or April uh, last year? Or this oh, year, rather, sorry. This year. Yeah, this year. so yeah. Yep. And, uh, yeah. And then the retrofits started a couple months ago. Uh, supposedly, Tesla will call you up uh, on Model S and Model X when your VIN is ready, and they'll do it. But uh, a lot of... Did you have to prod them, Casey, or did they just oh, offer yeah, it? Of course, of course. Yeah, so <laughs> I, uh, I went in to get the new headliner, and... Uh, the very last line on the app, I put, hey, uh, is my VIN up yet? 
And then I got no response from them, not even up to the night before, where they usually have you sign the papers for what they're going to do and give you some Uber credits. And uh, so I poked them, like, hey, uh, should I even bother showing up or not? And uh, the lady said, oh, yeah, she, she mailed off the agreement, and um, the last item was retrofit computer. There you go. So it never never hurts to ask yes. if, uh, and, if mm-hmm. you're prompting them. Correct. And if you have a, a Model S or Model X with the MCU one, they are not yet working with you yet. And same if you have uh, Autopilot two point five or two point oh. Uh, they're only doing two point five right now. But um or model three. Model three is a lot more involved than, than either car. But, oh uh, wow, but that's weird. It seems yeah, like uh, I would think knew. that would placement would be better in the model three. You think right. it'd be easier. The model they three knew they'd have to upgrade it so they should have made it a lot easier they should have yes the model 3 mcu and um autopilot computers sit next to or on top of each other they are touching and uh it's liquid cooled and so the screen is actually remote from the system and so because it's got coolant depending on the jurisdiction they can only do that in the shop whereas uh up to the shop they can choose if they want to do your model s or model x in the field because it's air cooled Ah, uh, because they don't have to give, they don't have to fool with uh, coolant at all. Exactly. Understood. Yeah. You mentioned MCU One. There's upgrade plans for that. That doesn't make sense to me. Um, well, Elon said a long time ago that MCU One, uh, there would be a path that you could pay to upgrade to MCU Two, and at the moment, the uh, current revision of Autopilot Hardware Three is only compatible. Uh, it might only be software. Uh, is only compatible with MCU Two. So. I see. So it wouldn't, obviously, it can't give you full self-driving if you don't have the cameras, but it could allow you to play some of the new games and other things. Oh, oh um, not Autopilot 1, but uh, MCU 1. Oh, 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 I got you. Right. Yeah, okay. so, so if you have the, where you can reboot your, your cluster separate from the screen, um, that's just not up to the task at the moment. But uh, that'd be awesome if they included that with the full self-drive. That would be a nice touch. Because then you get to get the Netflix and the games and all that, and then your cameras are still just black and white. <laughs> right, right. Well, speaking yeah. of speaking of games, yeah. um, there is a uh, a new app out there. Yeah. That uh, we'll just share the screen with. Yeah. Um, and it is uh, it's an AI version uh, for the Cybertruck. It is. So if if you have uh, if you've got an order in and you would be interested to see what the Cybertruck's going to look like in your garage. You can download the app on iOS. Uh, I haven't checked for Android, but on iOS it's available. I believe it's two two seventy nine something like that. That's price. Uh, price, but uh, that's Canadian. Uh, I was looking at the Canadian app store. Oh, okay, it's like could be cheaper in the U.S. Like Maybe yeah. it's two bucks in the in the U.S. Not sure, yeah. uh, but um, what's really cool about it is that uh, it's it's not obviously perfect. It's not, but it, it does give you a pretty good representation of the vehicle at different angles and of course you just point your phone at a space and that particular vehicle will show up in the space in fact it'll drive right in and uh, (laughs) give you uh, an animation of it driving and parking uh, in the space that your phone is pointed at so that was kind of cool that uh, that came out uh, just recently yeah that is kind of cool one of my friends uh, has this and he was at the Tesla service center and so took pictures of it in the repair (laughs) bay sitting all around the service center (laughs) <laughs> that's pretty cool. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So um, that's a great little thing to try out if you wish. Um, next story, uh, Casey's going to talk a little bit about um, a particular trial that was going on in Los Angeles. Yes, um, Elon and Mr. Unsworth got into a war of words online. Um, Mr. Unsworth is the guy who mapped out the cave last year that the uh, that the Thai soccer team, uh, Muba, uh, the wild boars, uh, were uh, trapped in during the, uh, the during the rainy season there. And uh, Mr. Unsworth went on CNN and said that Elon could shove the mini sub where it hurts. And Elon, uh, obviously short on sleep and patience. Said some stuff he shouldn't have said back on Twitter. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. And uh, he later apologized for it, and uh, the the guy didn't drop it. He said, "I'm going to sue you," and Elon said, "Sue me." And then the guy did sue him, <laughs> and um, he lost his case. Yeah. Uh, four yeah. days later, right? I think the yeah, case was like three and a half or something yeah. like that. Yeah. 
And um, so what we've learned there is uh, if you go starting fires, you better be able to take the heat because uh, they're not going to, you know, you started a, a war of words. And and so if they finish it, oh, well, it, it would have been different if, um, if Elon had uh, attacked this guy first, which thankfully he wasn't that... Uh, out of it from sleep that right but but this this <laughs> this guy provoked him with the original comment he did. and uh and then he was what he's supposed to be surprised that he got a response back uh that, you that, guys are uh this is the who he started it defense yeah exactly <laughs> he, he started, started it. it yeah exactly <laughs> it's, it's like the battle in the backseat of your parents car he, he poked me <laughs> right and then, if yeah. i go to if i go to a bar and i get drunk which i don't drink that much anyway and i never go to a bar and I find the biggest guy there, and I'm inebriated, and and I pick a fight, and he hits me after I like start hit, start something with him, like maybe I hit him or, or call his mom dirty names or something. I don't know. <laughs> I was kind of asking for it, wasn't I? And that's that's basically what the judge came up with is that is that well you started it. It was yeah. something that uh, you had thrown out a, a comment, uh, and and Elon came back with another comment. So tit for tat. I guess uh, is what it boils down to. Yeah, it's yeah. just two guys being immature online, and if that always ended up in court, oh my god, it would never. <laughs> Man, get the court anywhere. systems would be jam packed, wouldn't they? It's yeah. just stayed online, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And then exactly. uh, Elon elected not to sue the guy back for um, his uh, legal fees, even though the uh, judgment said that he could get that if he wanted to. Um, mm. He chose not to. Rub it in his face. Right. Right. I think that was the right move. Yep. Well, it's and, and I, I believe there's another case that's coming up in Great Britain. Uh, yeah. We'll have to see if uh, if there's any difference there. Hopefully, um, they just drop it and just call it. But a day. Uh, at least there, there is some precedence now uh, yeah. that uh, that this was dropped in the uh, Los Angeles court. So, or uh, actually, it wasn't dropped. It went to trial. Elon won. Uh, so. That, yeah, that, I heard the jury was only out for an hour. Yeah. Which, oh, wow. yeah, which means they were not that interested. That no, this is just stupid. What are we even doing here? Case dismissed. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, next story is a, a little bit about the Cybertruck as well. Um, there was actually with that app that we just showed you uh, about people placing it in their garage in their driveway, trying to see what it looked like. Um, there was some. There was a conversation about the actual size of the vehicle. Uh, being able to fit in a standard 20-foot uh, garage. And, uh, of course, the Cybertruck, I believe, is 19 feet 4 inches, as it was shown to us. Uh, so that gives you basically, what, 8 inches of uh, wiggle room in a 20-foot garage. Yeah. Um, and, and Elon came on and talked a little bit about how the truck's exterior dimensions may change slightly. They're, they could lose uh, about an inch or so on the width of it, and for the length of it, they could lose up to a couple of inches. And he talked about how that would not affect the actual uh, cargo storing ability uh, or uh, basically the uh, inside uh, usable space. Um, so I guess, or of course, the design is not going to change either. Uh, mm. But he, he talked about how that there might be some efficiencies they can use to shrink the exterior uh, just a little bit. And uh, give you a, a couple inches. I'm curious where it's coming from. And of course, those details weren't published no, uh, because because Elon just made this note in a tweet where he makes all his announcements. <laughs> but uh, it it is interesting that again this you know this this truck has certainly probably gone through a, a few different stages before right. it was unveiled to us, yeah. and it's still in flux uh, and will be, be probably for another year at least. Uh, as they finalize the design and see if there's any efficiencies or things they can add to it uh, that would make the vehicle better. I wonder if it's going to stay in development longer than typical because they don't have to finalize any dyes and then get the dyes set up from alpha to beta to, all right, this is the appropriate amount of uh, panel gap. Right. Yeah, that's, in yeah. that's interesting. That might be the case. Yeah, they wouldn't have as long a uh, lead time for a lot of those items, so they could push it closer. Yeah, that's yeah. interesting. Have a later beta date. Yeah. Yeah. So that that will be interesting to see if uh, if uh, things change a little bit, but obviously not really affect the exterior or inside room. Um, you certainly wouldn't want something drastic to happen because people, right. of course, 
have put their money down based on what they had seen. Uh, so half a bit. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. Yeah. But even the Model Three, when they uh, launched that, there were changes to the front. There were changes oh, yeah. to the trunk. So to see the rims and tires. Expected, yeah, yeah, so yeah. To, to think that this truck is going to be exactly what you saw on stage is ridiculous. Now, I've, I've heard people take that too far to say, oh, that's not what they're going to ship at all. They're going to make major changes before it goes. Yeah. I don't think that's the case either. They're I going mean, to make tweaks. The Model 3. Yeah, they're going to make yeah. refinements. They're going to, like, uh, they'll they'll do some testing with mirrors in case they don't get the side mirror camera law passed that they, they want. Yeah. Um, and uh, the other things like that. But... Uh, don't don't assume that it's going to be radically different or that it's going to be exactly the same because those are both wrong. It's going to be in between, in yeah. the middle, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So the Model Three, basically, that we, what we could all see, like I mean, there's somebody probably who could go over the micrometer. It was the front bumper, and the trunk mm-hmm. opening was widened a little bit, and then right. after the it started coming out, yeah, and yeah. then right after it came out, they actually put a uh, a rubber seal on the inside of the trunk lid uh, to make it so that less rainwater would seep in if, if the trunk wasn't in a uh, fully open or fully closed position. Right. Right. Yeah. All good things. So mm-hmm. uh, hopefully uh, Tesla will follow those uh, those uh, cues from the past, you know, as I'm sure they will, and, and add things that make sense. Mm-hmm. For sure. They Next. Culture uh, of innovation. They yeah, exactly. Speak, yep. Speaking of some innovation, uh, Casey's got a story about that ATV that we yes. saw, which is a bit of a departure from a normal Tesla vehicle. The two-seat ATV with the Alcantara seats. <laughs> 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 no, I want that and what together. But um, Elon has said that, yes, they, they plan to have that ready to go for the uh, launch of the truck, and uh, they might even have a dirt bike. But they will not have a motorcycle because they're too dangerous, even though... I think we discussed it here that the ATVs are more dangerous than motorcycles, so I'm curious about that part still. But I think uh, it's well, something to do with Elon's personal experience. Yeah, as, exactly. a, as a teen, he almost uh, died on a motorcycle. He got uh, into a incident with a truck and uh, spent some time in the hospital. So he's he's definitely against uh, motorcycles on the road, but he indicated that uh, dirt bikes might be an idea outside of the ATV. Yeah, plus uh, most people riding the dirt bikes that I see are actually wearing their PPE, so it's not like the road bikes where a lot of people will ride without their uh, not necessarily leather, but their 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 armor and their helmet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah if if they make a quad, it'd be cool if they made a jet ski and a snowmobile. <laughs> well, they're already halfway there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, going from a quad, it's uh, not, so, not that. Yeah, bad. I wouldn't think it's not much of a stretch. Um, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, initially, this will be only available as an option to Cybertruck owners. And uh, he didn't specify if that was only during purchase or just that you had to have a Cybertruck. So. All right, Casey, do you want a quad? Are you going to get one with your Cybertruck? We'll look at the at the, at the numbers because uh, <laughs> around here, there's nowhere to actually ride it. But it might be nice to kind of drop that and then ride from the supercharger to somewhere else. Of course. Oh, putting, yeah. They're putting the same size uh, battery in the quad, right? So the quad gets about, <laughs> what, 2,500 miles of charge? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's sort of. And if it ever rolls, there, you're dead. <laughs> the, the vehicle's so much lighter. You get like 2,500 miles between uh, in range. So. Uh, we have no idea, but uh, I'm sure it's not going to be that much. But uh, interesting to see, uh, and since the since the truck becomes its own charging point for the ATV, uh, that's really helpful if you're out in the wilderness. You can bring it back and plug it in uh, and get another charge to zip out again. But uh, uh, people did point out that this appears to be based on a much more popular ATV. But I think that this might have just been a placeholder because they kind of shoot it away after they. Yeah, well, it was on stage uh, for photos, too, for a little yeah. while. Uh, yeah. But uh, you're right. They, they didn't uh, talk much about it beyond that. Right. And I wouldn't so. be surprised if they got one that was uh, from some other company off the shelf and then just put on their styling and as yeah. a placeholder. Yeah, yeah, they've got time. Well, yeah, uh, two years. Yeah. Yep. Next story uh, is is one about oh I pressed the button twice that's not going to help. Uh, supposed to be sharing. There we go. So what we've got here is of course Gigafactory three in Shanghai, China. Uh, Tesla has received the sales certificate from the local government, wow. uh, so they're now able to start selling the cars. Um, and of course with that, 
the parking lot started to fill up uh, with uh, newly rolled off uh, Model 3s, uh, filling up some parking lots. And there's even been some uh, people reporting from China about uh, a few car carriers have been spotted loaded with Model 3s being shipped out from the factory. That was just yesterday. Uh, so uh, there, there is talk about these cars starting uh, to leave the factory. With the sales permit in place, they can now start selling them uh, immediately. So we will see uh, if uh, we start getting stories about, uh, I'm sure there's going to be a story about the first Chinese-made car sold to uh, someone in the country. Uh, that, should be, that should be happening fairly soon. That yeah. is awesome. And it's so cool to see they got it they done this year that they're going to be delivering. They, they were already going to have what looks like it's going to be a record revenue, record volume year, uh, quarter. So if they're actually delivering cars in China this month, that's going to yeah. be even better. That's awesome. And, and even even more so that this thing was a was a mud pit in January. Right. A mud pit to the lar- one of the largest buildings in the world delivering cars. <laughs> yep. Absolutely. Yeah. So uh, all that all that change uh, to a mud pit to make a factory to get the cars on the road and to actually putting them in the hands of customers in under a year. That's yeah. uh, that's incredible. Uh, what a story. And they've lined up battery partners and their battery factory is pretty pretty much done as well. Yeah, the exterior is pretty well done. Um, yeah. So uh, that's another phase two of the, the Shanghai factory is well on its way. Hopefully they do the same thing in Germany next year. Within yeah. A year. yeah. That would be awesome. So on to another topic uh, with Patrick. We've got something about uh, a virtual power plant. Okay, yeah, I'm going to make sure I get this right here. So this is a story by Simon Alvarez, and it's titled, Tesla's Virtual Power Plant Rescues Grid After Coal Peaker Fails, and it's only 2% finished. So this is pretty cool. Uh, a coal plant failed. Tesla has power walls at uh, a bunch of different homes in Australia, in this part of Australia, and it was the Queensland Kogan Creek Power Plant Station that failed. So these power walls were able to kick in, supplement the grid, so that even though this coal plant failed, the grid did not collapse, they didn't have blackouts, and, and that's incredible. And it's only 2% finished. That's the nice thing about batteries is they can respond, bam. If there's a need, they can supply it. And without, if you have peaker plants or other things, they have to spin up and get going. So uh, batteries, not so much. If you As soon as you see the... Uh, phase shift they can respond to that if you start to see the voltage dip they can respond to that it's incredible and th- this is they have in vermont another virtual power plant with a, a power company they've been working with there so this is this is pretty cool and uh just so you guys know i just ordered uh three power walls wow they, yeah they're going to come out and do a home assessment and uh they should be getting installed uh, next year so excellent cool. so, so patrick you must have a solar system already I actually have two of them, yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we had a small one installed in 2007, and then we had a, a larger one that it was twice as big, and it cost us half as much in 2015. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yep. Uh, so that's that's great to, to hear that. Um, so you we'll be able to get a video from you of uh, seeing how uh, that uh, system gets installed and uh, mm-hmm. what the actual... Uh, software tool is looking like um, that would be interesting to see. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And with the with um, we already we're on time of use here, and uh, electricity is relatively cheap in Oregon. And with with the time of use, uh, it makes sense because we have the cars charging overnight, so electricity is four point five cents uh, over overnight. And then we have solar generating power during the day to reduce our day usage. So now with these batteries, it'll be even better than that. So this is going to be awesome. And I'm getting one of them free thanks to the referral program. So well, you go. that's that's fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah. It, are you getting one with, I guess you're getting the one that was uh, part of the referral program. You're getting some signatures on that baby, aren't you? It, exactly, yeah. So uh, I talked to them last year and said, uh, hey, I want to order these power walls. And they said, well, we're out of the signature ones. If you want those, you have to wait for next year. And I'm like, I want the signature one, yeah. so I'll wait. <laughs> <laughs> ah, very good. So we look forward to hearing about that uh, as they uh, start to come online at Patrick's house. That's great. There you go. 
That way, when Next... you swipe over in the app, there'll actually be something there. It's an advertisement. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Uh, next, uh, of course, uh, there was a big buzz about seeing the Cybertruck around town recently. Uh, L.A. town, that is. Yeah. And uh, this uh, photo came out of uh, Elon out on the town uh, taking a few friends uh, out for a spin in a fiber tr- Cybertruck heading to their favorite restaurant. A um, couple things I wanted to mention was that uh, you'll notice the headlight bar, which of course in the unveiling was a solid white all the way across. It's obviously got some software tweaks in it that allows it to be looking like normal headlights uh, with the, just lit up on the ends um, as and the middle part not being lit at all. And of course the light bar across the top is not on as well. So yeah. obviously there are some settings uh, that uh, can be used. Uh, another interesting. Um, I might uh, say that it's actually just dimmer. I don't, it doesn't look like it's all the way off in the middle. It. it I well, you're like right. The old, like the old dimmer. Mercury's. Yeah, it may be just right. uh, like um, mood lighting. Uh, it's yeah. really light. light. Yeah. Uh, but uh, there are some videos of the truck uh, zipping around at night as well, and it certainly is showing that the the outside corners are look like normal headlights when you're looking far away from the truck. Yeah. Um, I, I hope it still has the adaptive lights from the Model S and Model X. So when you turn the wheel, it kind of casts a... Yeah, that would be nice. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, another when this, when this picture was posted, one of the comments I kept seeing was, I didn't know he knew Lilo from The Fifth Element. <laughs> <laughs> That's his girlfriend, Grimes. <laughs> uh, that very well may be the case. I, I'm not sure who that person is. Do you know? Does anyone know who it is? Yeah, uh, her, na- her name is C, like uh, the speed of light. Uh, That's Grimes, Grimes, his girlfriend. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That is his girlfriend. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. I also heard the, the talk that the cyber girl at the show, uh, the event, the, the hologram that showed up on stage, was that the same woman? I don't know. I didn't look too closely. I was more I heard something that that was <laughs> Elon's girlfriend, but it, that's unconfirmed. I, I really don't know. But, I don't know, uh, but if, if they ever do an AI in the vehicles, uh, they have to use Cybergirl as, as for that <laughs> and have her on the screen talking to you. <laughs> exactly. exactly. <laughs> and, and, and they look like a war dog. Look what's on out there. In this shot, you can also tell the, uh, the plastic hubcaps on those tires that we were talking about earlier, how they stuck out with those extra pins on the outside. Uh, they kind of stuck out from the from the actual rim uh, on the outside of the tire, and those definitely will scratch if you're not above the curb. And it's it's hard to tell. Uh, again, 35 inch tires, you may clear the curb a little bit, um, or you may not. But uh, something to be aware of. And something yeah, else. So look at- something, something else oh. to point out is that uh, go back to that previous picture. People were saying, "Oh, UD turn signals, blah blah blah." Look at the bottom above the fog lights. Yep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There they are. Yeah, June signals look- are embedded in the uh, crack uh, between the two uh, the two pieces. There, isn't it? Yep. And then there's a yep. trail camera right in front of the radiator. So you, you know when you're up in the air, you can see the road. Well, the trail. <laughs> <When you're- laughs> nice. Yeah. And, and look at the headroom. Musk is six two, and he's in yes. the driver's seat there. And there's I don't know how it looks like eight or ten, twelve inches above his head. At least he looks short. Yeah. Yeah, yeah he does look <laughs> short. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Now, uh, as they were out in the town, apparently they left the restaurant, and here's a high-quality photo showing them leaving the restaurant. But uh, apparently uh, someone in the parking lot said that they drove over a parking stanchion, like one of those foldable, uh, uh, I guess, stick arms that uh, direct people to go to certain areas. Now, again, yeah, you're safe in the sandwich. restaurant, but... Uh, yeah. Uh, valet had indicated that they might have drove over one of those parking stanchions that are flexible. Uh, you know, maybe, maybe they were trying it out. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> it was a uh, little uh, sandwich board that the valets would use to say valet here or valet five dollars, a lot full, a lot empty. And another another Flip person had, another person had said, well, if they they brought it to a valet, would they have let someone drive the Cybertruck? No, no. A Tesla employee took over uh, after Elon and Party dropped off, and he got in the Cybertruck and took it uh, to park it. So uh, it was given mm-hmm. to no one except for uh, authorized Tesla personnel. Yeah, which makes sense. It has imagine- dealer plates. It doesn't yeah. have mirrors. Uh, there's uh, there, so uh, it makes sense that it have to be an, uh, a Tesla employee. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So uh, our next story uh, moves to the uh, province of uh, Quebec, uh, right beside me. What's what's that all about, uh, Casey? 
So the mayor of this small province here, he wanted to get uh, not the province, uh, but uh, a mayor in the province of a, of a small town there. He wanted to get himself a electric infinity because he'd been buying infinities from this car dealership for years. And they came up with a solution. They ordered him a Model 3 uh, <laughs> and delivered it to him. And uh, it was an interesting choice. So let but... me get this straight. An infinity dealer in Quebec yes. bought a Model 3 to sell to their loyal Infinity customer. It probably yep. didn't hurt that he was the mayor. But yeah, exactly. So he comes into the Infinity dealership and says, I want to start driving an electric car. Uh, that's what I need for my image. I, it has to have long range. What do you guys have? And okay. they're like, well, in 2021, <laughs> we might have something for you. Maybe. Yeah. And uh, so Infinity Here's a nice by, brochure. <laughs> yeah. Infinity is owned by Nissan, I think, right? Yes. Correct. So, yeah. So, they're, a, a Leaf. And he's uh, not going to, that doesn't have the range that, that he wanted. So, this is what met his needs. And th this is one thing that's interesting about the dealership model. The dealership uh, doesn't have to have loyalty to their brand. They have to have loyalty to their customers, and here's one case uh, we've seen. We, we've had s several where the dealerships have hosed customers over. Here's one where they're actually doing the right thing by the customer and getting them what they wanted, even if it's not their brand. Yeah. So they actually have a chance to win his business back when uh, when the time comes. Uh, I'm surprised they didn't just go with a two or three year lease. That way, he had to come back. <laughs> yeah, that would make perfect sense. <laughs> if, yeah, they should have went and bought the car, and then they lease it to him. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> On a, yeah, exactly a three year lease, so that uh, when they have a, a a vehicle that meets his needs in three years, hopefully, yeah, that uh, he he'll come back to them. Well, he at least have to bring him the key back. <laughs> I, I can certainly tell you, and I'm sure the panelists will agree, is that uh, after having a Tesla for three years, man, it's going to be tough to go back to anything. Yeah, so, so they'll have to take his phone from him and order more cars for him. Yeah, that's it's gonna be it's gonna be tough, definitely. Yeah, I wonder how much yeah. profit they made on this. I I would imagine next to nothing. That's uh, true, it is a new car. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> in, interesting though. You're you're right. Uh, the customer is king in the dealership model, and uh, to be able to reach out to your own customer and say, "Listen, we will go the extra mile just to make you happy." Uh, that is customer service. Like that's that's really a lot of customer service. Yeah, I somehow I think on the this... show if we can. Oh, that would be cool. Yeah. Somehow I think this could only happen in Canada, though. <laughs> <That's> true. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are just way too nice. I'm not going to argue with that. Not going to argue with that at all. Nope. That would be mean. You can't do it. You're just not allowed. <laughs> can't do it. Just got to say sorry and move on. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Next, uh, we've got uh, an interesting photograph that was taken outside of a Tesla store, and uh, it looks to be like it's a new or a, an early product launch. And I'll have you guys take a look here. Look at this. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's right by the Tesla store. It's right. It's oh, got to be Tesla right. Like yeah. this is that looks like a Toyota T100. A Tesla store. It's got to be real, right? right? Like I'm looking at it, going, "My gosh, they got some zinc paint. They've got some duct tape. Uh, somebody really went to town on this vehicle to uh, make it appear the triangle shape." Now yeah. I'm not too good with pickups, but I'm thinking that might be a Chevy based on the. Uh, possibly the uh, door, the door handle, and the tail light, but I could be maybe wrong. Chevy S10, maybe. Who knows? It could be. I was thinking of Toyota T100. Uh, there was a guy who did a boat tail on it. It looked similar to that. Yeah, Tesla did say they might come out with the smaller version of the Cybertruck. But there <laughs> it is. There's their first prototype. <laughs> Too many curves. Yeah. So uh, beware of the pretenders. If you're not a Tesla store, and someone outside of it says. Hey, you want to buy a Cybertruck early? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm selling my order right now. So uh, beware. Beware of the pretenders. Yes. <laughs> uh, so that was great. That was great. Yeah. Uh, next story we've got. Uh, there was uh, some job postings that have happened for Gigafactory 4 in Berlin. And uh, what's interesting about these particular job postings uh, was that they are basically for battery and battery pack uh, build slash assembly. 
So the, the talk about this particular, uh, I guess, uh, news item was that the Gigafactory 4 most likely will have a battery component as Shanghai is building right now. Now, that's not a huge surprise, but Tesla hasn't explicitly said that to this point. And this information is just kind of leading us down the road that that Shanghai will probably be, uh, or Berlin will be a copy of Shanghai, where it will not only have the the manufacturing of the vehicles themselves, but ultimately a battery plant uh, that will send the batteries over to be incorporated in the cars right on site, which of course makes perfect sense. Uh, if you're building these cars, you definitely want to have all the parts as close as you can to each, each, each other so that these cars can be built in a time efficient manner and you're not waiting for just in time deliveries or problems that could occur with that. So uh, not a big surprise, but we thought we would just point that out. Yeah, yeah, it makes sense. Next, uh, Patrick's got a story about some new entertainment coming our way, possibly. Right. So uh, there is a several, but there's a Tesla hacker out there, green or green the only, depending on which forum you're on, who uh, likes to poke around in the software whenever there's a new update in the cars. And this time when he was poking around, he saw that they are laying the groundwork to possibly roll out several new entertainment options and i've got the list here so this is from electric it's a story by jameson dow and let me get the list here so here's what he found that they're laying uh they have some hooks in their code that could include comedy central crunchy roll an anime streaming channel hbo go hbo now uh there's several chinese video streaming services tencent yuku uh, IQEA, I don't know that one. Uh, and then additionally, there's Twitch and Mixer, and it looks like there's even a possible Easter egg for Monty Python, a Monty Python video channel. Yeah, the Monty That's... Python is, is active today if you name your car something ridiculous. Right, but uh, is that is that a channel or is it yeah. just a it's just a search in YouTube? It's a search in YouTube, yeah. Yeah. But if you if you name your car that, the thing comes up, you get the foot, the fart, and then. Uh, pretty much it stays there i i, tr I tried it too uh, patty is the name you have to call your car yeah there's there's a few different monty python names you can use but yeah so i wonder if they're going to uh make it so you don't have to go to that length it'll just be in there somewhere else or or if it'll uh be something slightly different from just a youtube search so yeah it, it's always working on new cool stuff and uh, it'll be interesting to see which uh, these companies will license to them or not, or if they're just going to use a web interface. And yeah, lots of lots of cool stuff coming. And uh, it's, it's pretty neat to uh, have a car that has all this. When you're at a charging stop or you're waiting for your kid at school to pick up or whatever, or you can just... to shop or... Yeah, 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 <laughs> whatever. When, yeah, if you just want to hang out in your car, um, it's got a great sound system. You want to watch some movies, uh, go make some popcorn and hang out in your garage and have... <laughs> 11 <laughs> speaker surround sound system better than most home theaters so there you go <laughs> it's, it's another view on the drive-in <laughs> yeah speaking of sound uh, yeah. later later on in that same thread uh, green also uh, mentioned that uh, the uh, audio services that that they found earlier are still there with the exception of t-tunes so uh, you've got uh, apple music um a lot of other uh Sorry, they slipped my mind as I started talking about it. But uh, basically, the only one missing from the list he found earlier is T-Tunes because he found it, and they they're like, "No, no, we're not doing that." <laughs> That's right. So, there was there was the talk of uh, uh, Tesla Tunes or T-Tunes as uh, it was labeled somewhere. So, uh, and of course, they denied that they were doing their own type of music streaming. Uh, right. Yeah. Which, so, Casey, what's what's your last name? It's also Green. <laughs> and you seem to know a lot about this, right? I agree, and I talk. And, uh, yeah, and uh, yeah, you you have some computer skills, right? I do. Mm. I do. I'm just saying. Mm. Just just connecting the dots. Just connecting the dots, my but friend. See, That's see green is in Tennessee, and I'm in DC. <laughs> I like this story. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he, he stick to that. Yeah. You can get a mailing address anywhere, my friend. This is true, and we both drive Model X. <laughs> Uh, and our last story of the evening comes from Westport, Connecticut. Yes. And what's in Westport, you ask? Well, it's the, the police Westport Department. Police Department <laughs> has decided that their next uh, next cruiser is going to be a Model 3. And not just an ordinary Model 3. Uh, this is an actual performance all-wheel drive model. 
Yeah. Um, so the police uh, have decided that they're going to try out the car. Uh, and here's the other interesting part of the story. They have interest in the, the uh, actual camera system in the car and what it'll be able to add uh, to uh, policing in the area, whether that's right. uh, recording when you're driving uh, or if it's um, actual uh, sentry mode when the car is parked. Uh, they are apparently in some talks with Tesla about the different abilities that maybe could be enhanced uh, for police work uh, for those exterior cameras on the car while, while the car is either moving or not moving. Um, so that was kind of interesting. Another thing that they pointed out, of course, is the, um, the maintenance and fuel savings uh, for the car uh, over, I believe they said two years, $11,000 in fuel savings. Yep. Um, so wow. that's they drive a lot. Half, five and a half grand in fuel a year, uh, mm, quite a bit. And some other savings, yeah. Uh, so maintenance and fuel, um, again, huge uh, savings uh, for the police department. Uh, similar to that uh, police department outside of uh, Indianapolis, Indiana, who had indicated that after about uh, six years of uh, of the car on the force the savings in fuel would basically buy the next new car uh, and they wouldn't have to pay anything for it. Um, so uh, just the fuel savings alone uh, would be able to buy the next car after six right. years. So yeah. uh, interesting, yeah. interesting point. And I, I pointed out with this group before that um, not only did they cite the other police department when they uh, were doing their justification for this, they also wanted to one-up them by getting the performance instead of the uh, standard range. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and if the numbers still pencil out, why not? <laughs> right, right. And then uh, the one of the articles I read pointed out that unlike uh, the incident where uh, the Californian uh, police department ran out of juice, uh, this one does over two times what they need in a shift. So even if somebody forgets to plug it in, it should be good through the next right. shift. Yeah, That's right. nice. Yeah. yeah. And with the gas cars, the police vehicles have uh, computers in, in them that they're using for all sorts of various things. And that means t to power it, they have to leave the car running. So even if they're sitting somewhere doing paperwork or looking something up, uh, they have to have the engine running. So with an electric car, it's got plenty of battery power to, to run a computer without yeah. impacting the range significantly at all. So that's, that's really cool. Exactly. My, my local police department uh, is thinking about getting an electric car, and they had narrowed it down to the Tesla and the Bolt. And uh, I was talking to one of them about it and said, okay, well, if you're going to ever use this for community outreach, who, uh, what do you, which car do you think the kids are going to be far more interested in, a Tesla or a Bolt? And I'm like, oh, yeah, that's a good point. And then also the, the computer system, if they can put in an A-B switch to the screen and then just use the center console screen that's already there, yeah. that would save them some money. Uh, and it's it's perfectly placed where you want to want it to be to interact with it instead of having something that's off to the side on some kind of swing arm or whatever that would be more expensive. So yeah, I, I definitely uh, would encourage them to go with the Tesla. Yeah, and, and then, and then, then when the truck comes out, you got to get one of those. It's cool. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. like the uh, like our story last week about the uh, the Mexican mayor uh, uh, right. suburb of Mexico City ordering fifteen of them for his city. Yeah, so right. uh, and they yeah. they said. They said they reached out directly to Tesla, so they may actually be able to get themselves a, a container in there to uh, to run some apps rather than having to do the laptop. But like you said, they, they could do uh, a video and touchscreen feed from uh, from the laptop and keep that in the trunk now instead of in the front seat. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Now, now, if you're watching this show for the first time, first time you've ever been here, please press that subscribe button. Give us a number. I uh, would really be, appreciate that. Uh, also, if you want to get alerts when the show goes live, uh, since we are going to be premiering this show, just press that uh, bell button and we will send you an alert. YouTube will send you an alert uh, when the show goes live and when any show goes live. Uh, so uh, please do so. Also, uh, you can follow us through the week uh, and see the news that we're going to read or comment upon uh, during uh, the show uh, by following us on Facebook at the Tesla Life Numero One. Patrick is the one that curates that for us and does a fantastic job. Thank you, Patrick. And uh, also, if uh, you want to follow us on Twitter, uh, we're very active there, and you can follow us at the Tesla Life and uh, connect with us there as well. So uh, 
With that, we'll move into some shout outs uh, for uh, wrapping up this evening. Uh, Patrick, what have you got for us? Sure. I, first of all, want to give a shout out to the chat room. Uh, we were not able to do the show live like we used to with the chat room. It was always cool to interact with you guys. So uh, I, I'm, uh, I'll be there during the premiere and uh, hopefully chatting with you guys right now. So that's cool. So hey, chat room. And my other shout out is to the Oregon Electric Vehicle Association. I am with the OEVA. You can find us at OEVA.org. And we're on Facebook and Twitter. And we got the social media feeds going. So it's, it's a good time if you want to follow what's going on here in Oregon. Excellent. Excellent. There you go. Mr. Green, you've got something to tell us about, I'm sure. I do. All right. So my shout out is obviously my channel, uh, youtube.com slash KC Green. I just put up a video about my autopilot uh, to full self-driving retrofit. So t- cool. check that out. Uh, but then I've got a nice video as a one more thing to show you. And then I've also got a, uh, a really good um, something to share with you guys as well that uh, – we can help out with uh, a one we, more thing. Excellent. A one more, one more thing. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, it looks like it. Am I sharing? Yeah, I am sharing. Yeah. Sharing. Yep. Okay. So on my Twitter, I've retweeted this video. So that vehicle on the right looks familiar, doesn't it? It's certainly on well, the not right. The Ford, not the Ford, can, on the right. I, the I can't see right. the one on the right. Oh, that's a model. There's X. the back. Yeah. It's a P100D, very much like mine. <laughs> <laughs> and we can tell it's four-wheel drive because yeah. all the wheels are spinning. Independent. All the wheels are spinning. <laughs> so do you know what uh, truck that is that's uh, getting its uh, kind of ass handed to it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Listen to what he says next. I have a mom car. I'm getting the cyber truck. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, okay. so there were people saying that the tow... Uh, competition with the truck wasn't uh the physics wasn't right and that, that the uphill actually helped the tesla and not the ford because it shifted the weight off of the rear wheels well, whatever they're going to do it again they'll take all of that stuff into account and i think it's still going to win so it's this is the electric just has torque i mean there's it's, it's you have to it's, it's the reality of it okay so this one here is uh this young man will he's nine years old he had a heart transplant it's not going well so uh-huh. over at uh, NC Car, they're doing a uh, chill for Will. So if you have a cool car, it'd be nice if you could bring it on down so you can take a look. So um, a couple of the Tesla clubs of North Carolina are going down, and uh, my wife and I will probably try to make it. Uh, but even, as you see in the video there, if you have uh, a fossil car that's kind of cool, bring it along. You know, it would be an experience of a lifetime for the young man. So if you go to Facebook and you search on chill for Will, it'll come up? I don't know if it's public or not, but if you search for NC Car and Out of Spec Motoring, uh, they can get you the details. Okay. Yeah. Very good. Very good. Very good. All right. Well, uh, that's that's about a wrap up for today's show. Um, certainly, uh, a lot of news uh, covered, and uh, we will see you again next week. And you can see what's happening in the Tesla life. Thanks for joining us, everyone. Lee Moon, special shout out to you for providing us the music that we're about to cue right now. Thank you. Thanks, Lee. Have a good week, everyone. Bye-bye. See you later. Right, <laughs>